Father, forgive me for all the things that I have done. That has not been pleasing to you, forgive me. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And give me the strength to speak the words that you are telling me to speak. Even though for some it may cause harm to me. Some may not even understand. And do I really understand? I don't know. But I pray for your forgiveness. And I pray that this video will help many that have thought about doing this. I ask you in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Amen. This is one of the hardest testimonies I'll ever have to give, maybe, ever, because it happened to me personally. The 19th of this month, I tried to commit suicide. Something I'm not proud of. But I must talk about it. I was told that many <clears throat> that do this can't never talk about it afterwards. And if they do, they try to make an excuse for what they did. But there is no excuse, none whatsoever. I let depression <clears throat> overcome me to the point bearing so many things on my mind that happened in the past that was happening in the present and me and my husband had just had words about some things. I mean, husband and wives do that, you know. You get two people in a house, still will never always agree on each, you know. And if you tell me that you have a perfect marriage and that you all always agree on everything, then someone is totally submissive to the other person. But during the heat of the argument and the stress and of everything that was going on and had been going on for a few days with other things in my life, it just seemed like that was the last straw that broke the camel back. And I come in here and I had been on some pain pills for my back because most people know my back hurts all the time because it was I got it broken up in Utah <clears throat> when I went and seen Elizabeth and, and them and I always had pain even though I had an operation so after a while all of, all of that I, I just wanted to get out 
I wasn't thinking about heaven, nor was I thinking about hell. I was just wanting to get out. And I ran in here and took a handful of Valium and Reflex, you know, muscle relaxers. I put them in my hand, and I throw them in my mouth, and I begin to chew them, and my husband come in just as I was doing that, and he grabbed me up, and he throwed me on his shoulder, and he started jumping up and down, trying to get me to spit them out. But it was already too late. I was chewing them up and swallowing. So... I went out and sat on the front porch, preparing to die. Of course, they got a hold of the 911 and Hotel of Pea Ridge come out every I think every police officer around pretty well <clears throat> even beat the ambulance there and I thank God for one of the officers who knew me really well and he stood there and he was talking to me and saying Barbie you, you don't want to do this you know he's trying to keep me awake he says Barbie you don't want to do this he says Look at all the people you have helped in this town. He said, you have a big influence on this town. And he began to tell me things that I, I, I didn't know. Because... And I looked at him and I said, you know how long I have been praying for you guys out there to be safe and sound? And he says, I know, God, and we need you. We need you. We need prayer warriors that will stand by us and pray for us. And I looked at him and I said, I, I don't know. I just want to, I want to leave. I just, I just want to leave. And he said, but you can't leave. And I looked at him and I said, you know, I know I'm going to hell. I know it. I know I am. And my husband was sitting there crying and begging me and, and the ambulance got there. And they got me in the ambulance and was heading off and they had to even stop on the way. Because see, I died. I died. And I went to this place of darkness. It was like a box. It's like these, I could feel these two, two hands pick me up on each side and carry me and drop me into this box of total darkness. I couldn't even see before my, there, there was just no light, no nothing, no windows, no doors. And at first I was scared and, and I tried to find my way out. You know how you feel along and you try to find your way out. I could feel like there was others there, but I could not feel, feel them. And I tried to scream, I tried to talk, I tried to holler, and I, I could feel that maybe there was words coming out of my mouth, but I couldn't hear nothing. I couldn't hear no words. I, it was, the silence was deafening. The darkness was blinding.
and I began to know that this was where I would be. Fear had gripped me at that point. And I thought it was too late. I thought it was over. I thought that's where I was going to be. <sighs> then I was lifted up out of that box and put in another area that I believe was hell. There's rooms in hell. There's rooms there for different things, for different types of sin. But I walked down this hallway and I couldn't see anything on either side until I got to this big round pit like thing and I seen these hideous things chained up chained up and they were screaming and growling at me and I was so afraid cause I thought that's where I'd be. But then I was lifted up. <clears throat> and when I was lifted up, I was lifted up into this light. It was, it was like a room full of total light. No darkness whatsoever. And the person that I met when I was seven years old stood there once again. I seen his golden sandals. I seen his white, look like linen robe he had on and a gold slash around his waist. And his face was so brilliantly lit and it was like flames of fire I could see in his eyes and this is what he said to me I had no right to do what I did. There is only one that has that right. And that one is the one that breathed the breath of life in all of us. And he that giveth life is the only one permissive to take that life. And he says, when you take your life, you are choosing to take that choice away from God the Father and put it in your own hands and set that spirit that's inside you, that spirit person that makes you, when you take and kill this house that that spirit lives in, you let it loose before it's time. And that first place that I went to, the dark place, is where people that take their lives go to. Now, I know many are not going to believe this. There's many that's going to disagree, but this, this is what happened to me, and this is what's 
was said to me. That the giver is the only one that has the right to take. So therefore we have no right to take our own life in any way, shape, nor form. And that's where we will be placed in total, total darkness until the day of the great white throne judgment when those that take in their lives will come out and stand before him and be accountable for what they did. What happens from then on, it's between them and God personally. Yeshua didn't tell me what the Father would say, for that judgment is the Father's and the Father's alone. But I assure you, I assure you, if you're even thinking about taking your own life, don't. It doesn't get you out of anything. But it only puts you in this fearful place of total darkness. And it's not a place of rest. It's not a place of peace. Because the silence that is deafening and the blindness that you cannot see anything, anything, it's total dark. You can't even see your hand before your face. It is so dark. It is just mind, mind bending beyond reasoning. And that's where you live. Yeshua said, I am letting you go back because it is not your time to die and you still have work to do. And how dare you try to take your life when I called you when you were seven years old. When I called you forth, now you try to do what is not obedient to me? I send you back to finish your job. But if you do this ever again, there will be no forgiveness and no going back. And that is fearful to me. <laughs> That is fearful to me. I don't want to go back there. I never want to go back there. We have no right to take our own life. We are born of the Father. We are born of the Creator. For in Acts, it says, They that seek the Lord, if people they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move and have our own being, as certain 
also of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much that as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's devices. We are God's offsprings. We are. And as Yeshua said, I paid a price for you. I bought you. I paid that price that you would have life and have it abundantly and have it eternal. But in my own selfish feeling sorry for myself, letting depression overcome me. And instead of standing in the light and standing on him when things were beginning to tear at me, I wanted to run. I wanted to get out. I wasn't thinking about going to heaven in God's arms, or nor was I thinking about going to hell, even though I felt deep in my heart that's where I was going. We are God's offsprings. He breathed us into life. And as Yeshua was sharing many things with me, and telling me many things, even about those things that was chained up down there. And maybe later on I'll make a video of talking about what else Yeshua shared with me but right now the important thing with the depression and the things that are going on in this earth satan is taking over and putting a heavy blanket of depression upon this earth to cause many to take their own lives against god's will People that know who Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is. People that know who Jesus is and what he did for them. They still get so depressed. They seek a way out. There's only one way out. That's through Yeshua. And that's not by us taking a handful of pills like I did or putting a gun to your head or whatever. We have no right to do that. We really don't. The only one that has the right to take our life is him that gave it. The 21st day committed me to this place that uh, overseed me for a while because when they brought me back and fed me charcoal and I don't know, oh, it was it was it was terrible. But I had to go through that to get rid of the poison that was in my system, and they brought me back. This is the hardest thing to confess that I would give in to depression, you know. We've already heard of many that's taken their life over YouTube. We've talked about them. 
we really do need to pray for each other and stand by each other. For taking our life is not the way out. And what is waiting for us on the other side is fearsome. It's neither heaven nor hell, it's a waiting room. A waiting room for the white throne judgment. Please, if you if you're even considering, please don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't go there where I went. You may not be blessed as I was to be brought back out. And I was told if I ever did it again, that's where I would be. I seen my dwelling place until the great white throne judgment. I don't want to go there ever again. Never. <sighs> ever again. No. No. And I apologize to all out there that I even did this. I apologize. I feel that I need to apologize to everyone that has ever heard any word that I've said. Please hear this. If there's ever one thought that enters your mind of suicide, remember, we don't have the right to take our life. Only him who gave us that life. We must be obedient to him. Father, in the name of Yeshua, forgive me. In some way, somehow, let us reach out and save other people's lives that are thinking about doing the same thing I did. <laughs> Father, please let it be anointed and let it go out to others that needs to hear your words. <laughs> For the life we have, it is given of you, and you're the only one that has the right to take it. So, Father, forgive me, forgive them, forgive us. I ask in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, rebuke that demon of de depression, that demon of suicide, that demon of, of just giving up, let us stand firm for you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.